Hi, my name is Mike Lingle. This is my financial model tool for startups. And uh, what I tried to do is create something that's very easy for people to use. Um, so I think what we're all familiar with is these very complicated financial models with lots of little boxes. And it scares all of us. Uh, it takes a very long time to build these. So, um, and I used to build these for startups, uh, for entrepreneurs, but I found that I was actually doing a disservice because I would create this complicated thing. I would hand it to the, the founder and then the founder wouldn't really understand the numbers, uh, but it's important that people understand the numbers. So what I started doing when I was helping people with their pitch decks was I started working backwards. So this is the goal. You know, this is what we want to show to an investor. Uh, it shows months of um, uh, financials, and then it shows uh, year summaries for three years. So the first year is broken out by month, and then you see summaries for the first three years of operations. Uh, it gives a, a key, uh, key performance indicator. So in this case, it would be paid subscribers for a subscription business. It shows a growth rate. It shows revenue that's coming in. It shows the cost of sales or cost of goods sold against that revenue. It shows a gross profit. Um, so in this case, this business loses a lot of money. Then it shows operating expenses and then EBITDA, which is an important startup metric. It shows headcount, so how many full-time employees um, you have and the average revenue per year per employee. And then cash. So how much cash this startup has available at any given moment. So obviously these are all terrible numbers. We'll fix them in a minute. Uh, but what I started doing was saying, okay, what if we just make this really easy? So instead of building all these complicated boxes, uh, the founders just ask us, answer a series of questions about those three years. So we can go through here and decide what kind of business we're building. So maybe we're building uh, a marketplace and we're gonna turn off uh, any manufacturing or inventory, and we're gonna turn off subscriptions. Um, and we're just gonna run a marketplace like an eBay or an Uber. Uh, or maybe we are doing subscriptions, so we're just running a software as a service business. So as I flip these business models on and off, uh, you'll see that things uh, start to gray out below me. So what happened is when I turned off transactions, uh, this area of the model grayed itself out. So it's very easy. Uh, and then you just go through and you answer some questions. So you answer some questions about your subscriptions. Uh, maybe you have a tier one, a tier two, and a tier three. Uh, you can enter the pricing. You can enter the growth rates. And then you also enter some information about your costs uh, and your sales funnel. So you may or may not be selling something through an app store. So if you're not selling through an app store, you can turn that off. Uh, if your founders are selling, you can say how much it is that they're selling. If you have organic traffic to your website um, through SEO or whatever else, you can uh, start with how many people are visiting your website. So often for many of us, not many people are visiting our website. And then you can set a growth rate and you'll see the curve plotted here. Uh, so as you adjust those numbers, uh, you can see what that does to the growth rate. And then uh, maybe you're paying for ads on Facebook or Google. So you can say how much you're spending per month, uh, what month you start spending that on. Uh, and you'll actually see the curve changes. So when I pushed it out six months or nine months, you'll see that my spending is flat at the beginning of this curve. And then the spending kicks in. Uh, you can enter some information that you get from uh, Facebook or Google as you run the ads, your cost per thousand impressions, your click-through rate, and that'll give you an implied cost per click for your ads. Uh, you can turn on or off a direct sales team. So if you're selling software as a service, maybe you don't have any kind of direct sales team. Maybe you're just selling direct to consumer over the web. Uh, you can also turn on uh, channel partners and affiliates. So it may be that you don't do any affiliate sales or maybe you do have affiliate sales and they start in month six. And then you can enter some assumptions around your affiliate sales. Then you can enter your cost of uh, sales. So um, you can enter, uh, in this case, um, 
we would go down to the subscription cost of sales assumptions, and we would also enter uh, costs that might be happening for our tier one, our tier two, and our tier three subscriptions. And then you can go through and you can enter your assumptions for salaries. Uh, so if you're paying benefits, health insurance, that kind of thing, uh, you can also enter sales and marketing expenses, research and development expenses, and general administrative expenses, including your office rent. Uh, and this then generates uh, this financial projection slide for you. And um, there's a few more uh, assumptions you can enter. So the second tab here is the hiring plan. And so you can enter salaries. So maybe as your CEO, uh, you're making $75,000 in the first year. You're starting in month one. Uh, and you can actually decide, uh, so maybe you hire a CEO who makes a little bit more than you, $85,000 a year, but maybe that person doesn't start until month six. So just by editing these blue boxes, you can very quickly, and maybe you hire a COO, or maybe the CTO and the COO are both founders as well, and they all start in month one. And maybe you're all making the same amount of money. <clears throat> and then you can map out over the following three years how many people you're hiring, what you're paying them for these various positions. And so you can very quickly build out your headcount and then finally, you can look at the plan you've built. So in this case, uh, this is a terrible plan. All we do is lose money. Uh, but um, this will tell you uh, in month 36, I'm down almost 5 million bucks. Uh, if I were going to, so I need to come up with five to five and a half million dollars of financing. So I could either do that by raising money from investors, which I can turn on or off here, or I can borrow money. Um, so I can turn the borrowing engine on and off here. And then I'll see some uh, information on what the company might be worth. Um, so the implied acquisition value based on EBITDA is uh, zero. We could also run some numbers based on revenue. Uh, I can also look at the net present value of the business and calculate uh, an internal rate of return and an exit multiple. So in this case, this is a horrible money losing business. But I can go back here and set the assumptions and um, you know, turn it into a positive business pretty quickly. So it takes about 30 to 60 minutes to run through um, and set up a business. I'm going to run through a couple examples here. But uh, again, you know, we're creating this slide that we can put into our pitch deck. Uh, so that's a quick tour of the financial model uh, tool. I will um, do some deep dives and create some different types of um, companies and scenarios in the next few videos, but wanted to give you a sneak preview and um, let you see what's here. So again, my name is Mike Lingle. This is my financial projection template for startups. Hope you enjoyed it.